Who else loves LEGO? This timeless toy has captivated us for generations and continues to grow in popularity. Personally, I often need to restrain myself from buying a new set to save money. So what's my solution? Integrating the concept of LEGO into my work. So in this episode I will explore a crucial aspect of the development process that I've applied across numerous projects, component-based development. I will demonstrate how this approach can enhance system flexibility, boost the teamwork and decrease the stress and time associated with the implementation. I will show you how to build a websites like with LEGO bricks. So welcome back, I'm Przemek and let's get started. This series addresses junior to mid-level software engineers or agency owners who search for ways to build efficient workflow. It offers foundational insights into developing software that's easier to manage, test and faster to implement, which should increase the efficiency and earnings. It might be precious if you already completed a few projects and you are searching for your next steps in the more interesting patterns. Although I came from the WordPress background, this article is technology agnostic, meaning that the concepts can be applied regardless of the used stack. Whether you are developing mobile apps, WordPress plugins, custom teams or applications with Laravel, Vue or Next, the principles outlined here will be beneficial. I will focus on ideologies rather than specific solutions, making the content universally applicable. What is component-driven development? Let's consider the simplest analogy. What is a car? It's for sure a tool that simplifies your life, but focusing more on the architectural terms, a car is a collection of self-efficient modules, each designed to perform specific tasks. These modules, like the engine, suspension or gearbox, work together to meet your needs. Each module has a distinct function, but together they ensure that the car works effectively and efficiently. Now, let's say that the engine breaks down. Does it mean that the gearbox might be broken too? In the worst case scenario you can simply replace the engine without risking any issues with the gearbox. Sure, the gearbox connects to the engine at some point and bears some risks, but this breakpoint is centralized, ensuring that other parts are fine. What if the gearbox were integrated with the engine? In that case, a problem might need fixing or replacing both, leading to significantly higher costs. This scenario highlights the problem with highly coupled architecture where a failure in one component can impact the entire system and other parts much more than in the previous example. Component-based architecture is a method of creating systems using reusable bricks, each with well-defined functionalities interacting with others through their interfaces, allowing each brick to contribute to the whole. Each component can be developed, tested and maintained independently, working together to form a complete system. Thanks to the component-based architecture, maintenance is much more manageable. When a single component fails, you can focus solely on fixing that one part, often without needing to interfere with other ones. This approach not only simplifies repairs but also reduces the cost. Instead of searching for multiple specialists, you only need to find one who specia specializes in engines, keeping the expenses and effort more contained. The component is a reusable brick performing a specific task and interacting with others. But what does it mean that the component is good? There are several factors to consider which can vary depending on the workflow. Here I will share the approach that I truly believe which saves time, reduces cost and spares you a lot of frustration. The first one is that the good component should be reusable. In this traditional approach you often copy and paste the code from one place to another to reuse specific part of the code. Whenever the change is needed you have to track down all the instances where the code is used and update each one. Having worked this way many years ago and I realized how inefficient it was for me and for the clients. A well-designed component should be reusable, meaning that you should write the code once and use it across various parts of the project. When changes are needed, you make them only in one place and they automatically propagate through your code base. The second one is that the component should be specialized. You are a developer, so you've likely experienced a uh, back pain at least once. If it persists, would you consult someone who knows a little about everything? Or, or, or a physiotherapist who specializes in treating this specific type of the issue? I believe you would choose the second one since there is a higher chance of success. And components like this too. A well-designed component is specialized in one thing and does it right. 
Smaller units are simpler to develop, test and maintain over time, so it's crucial to not overload your component with multiple loosely related features. The third part is that the component should be context agnostic. If you buy an iPhone, you expect it to work no matter if you are inside or outside the house. Of course, it's limited to some external factors like the network provider, but still, it should work fine in such simple scenarios, both inside and both outside. Those rules can be applied also to components. So, a well-designed component should be context agnostic, meaning that it should keep its functions, looks in and behavior no matter where it's used. If the component, if the specific component works fine only on the homepage, that's wrong. Similarly, if the component keeps its design behavior or look only when another not related file or component is present on the page, that's wrong too. They should be self-efficient no matter where they are used. The fourth part is that the component should be isolated. One minor challenge in IT projects handling is the client's micromanagement. Clients uh, hire us to solve a specific problems, but often dictate the exact solutions, which rarely really works well. They should provide requirements and trust us to handle the implementation. Much like I choose which hand to use with my mouse, a detail that the client doesn't need to know, components should maintain autonomy over their internal operations and just give the result. A well-designed component should isolate its internal details and allow modifying its behavior only in controlled ways such as uh, configurable options. The world doesn't need to know how this component achieves its goal. What truly matters is that it effectively achieves the intended purpose. And the fifth rule of good component is that they should be replaceable. So let's get back to our car. If the engine breaks and you need to replace it, you'd expect to swap out just the engine, not the gearbox, suspensions and all the parts, right? That's something that components should make simple too. A well-designed component should be easy to swap out. If you find yourself needing to adjust various other parts of your code just to switch one component, something isn't right. Components should be decoupled and their replacement should be easy. Let's talk a little bit about business now. There are uh, several areas where such approach can be beneficial for the business. The first is reducing a cost. If you've built something once and it works well and you are proud of it, why not to leverage it for the future? Why not reduce your time spent on the development process and keep the high standards that you've set? Optimize your workflow and earn the money. Adopting this strategy can significantly reduce your workload. When a handled pro properly, you can develop a set of components that can be used across many projects, continually refining them and tailoring them to specific needs, and of course reducing costs. You are essentially building your customized toolkit tailored to your requirements. The next benefit is improving a teamwork. Imagine you are working at a company with several team members, each with their responsibilities. You've just landed the clients and you are eager to get started, but the deadlines are tight. As it often the case, the projects need to be completed ASAP. With component-driven architecture, you can easily have three different developers work on separate components that will together build the whole layout faster. They won't disturb each other because due to the self-sufficiency, they work independently. They won't make many conflicts in the Git since they work on separate files. They won't create a lot of work in the code review since you check only the one specific component at a time. The next benefit is improving estimations. Extracting components from the design is a crucial step in the process of preparing an offer in our workflow for a long time. It's much easier to estimate the time needed for a single component with clearly defined functionalities and sum up the results than try to estimate the entire projects all at once, which is forbidden in our workflow by the way. You can easily estimate the cost for creating four separate components, sum up the results and then send an offer. This method offers much more peace of mind and control over the project. If in the initial stage you see that the budget for two out of the four components has been exceeded, it immediately alerts you that something is wrong. The next one is reducing problems. 
There is no such thing as a perfect project. Issues centrally arise at some point. In a highly coupled architecture where everything is consolidated into one file, when the one components fail, fixing it can feel like navigating in a battlefield. Even with the best intentions, there is a risk of unintentionally affecting other parts of the code. In a well-designed component architecture, issues like broken single block have a less impact. Even if it's initi initiated in the template, it isn't coupled with other elements. You can comment out the initialization, go to the source and figure out the problems without affecting other parts of the code. If making mistakes costs less because of how your system is structured, why not embrace that approach? How to identify components from the design? Let's get back to the app design that we are working on. Based on the previous point, how many components can you identify? If you are imagining one massive component that handles everything, think about the cost of fixing the car with the gearbox integrated with the engine and try again. Try to use the component component rules defined earlier and search for the elements that match as many rules as is possible. After a brief brainstorming, I identified four components to develop. Navigation, hero, tile and list. This collection allows providing minimal values that are important. Reusability, specialization or isolation. Is that enough? Based on the components rules that we discussed earlier, from my purposes, yes, but it's generally up to you. Remember that the pragmatic approach should work well here too. You are the chief here. For instance, you might choose to combine the tile and list into a single component since the design is simple. However, I separated them because upon closer design inspection, I realized that this component could be used in other areas too. We might also create a few smaller components like button, but we will handle this in the new parts. And now it's the time for something new here and on my blog. There are as many approaches to the creation process as there are developers, and that's why I've gathered insights from several great developers about the component-driven approach. They will share their experiences to help you understand different than mine perspectives and learn from diverse approaches. The first one is a Charaf, a web developer and WordPress specialist who is responsible for creating one of the hottest tools in the ecosystem in recent months, the Bricks Builder. Charaf shares his useful insights and knowledge about the component driven developer. So if you are interested in his thoughts and what uh, he wants to say about this process, just check out the link that I provided in the video description. You can read the whole interview in my blog. Since we've split up the design into several components, we are ready to handle the next steps. So in the upcoming uh, videos, I will guide you through setting up a blog architecture in a custom WordPress theme or plugins and creating uh, functional components that serve your needs. Even though we will be using WordPress, don't worry, because as many mentioned earlier, the concepts and the strategies that we will discuss are applicable across various technology and stacks, so just stay tuned for more. So thank you for staying with me, and if you found this material helpful and want to keep up to date with the latest content, consider subscribing and hitting the bell button so you don't miss out any updates. Giving me a thumbs up lets me know you appreciate our work and helps more people find it. Feel free to use the simple form below to let me know what you think about this material, about this video. It will be really helpful, I will provide a link to this form in the video description. So again, thank you for staying with me and see you next time. Bye bye!